animated diff used to be limited to very short videos, but no longer. Now you can make AI generated videos of any length and even do morphing as well, all thanks to batch prompting. Remember the old days of VQ GAN clip where you had different prompts at different times? Well, even if you don't remember, the video playing right now should give you an idea of what you can do. But how can I do this myself? And is it free? I hear you shouting at the screen. Well, dear nerd, let me fill you with the arcane knowledges required for the princely sum of nothing. If you're ready to begin, here we can see from this fork of the Animate Diff software, all we need is a... What? People don't like editing JSON files and they'd rather just use a web inter... Well, why don't we do that instead? Yes, hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery, where today I guide you in the most minute detail through this single workflow so that you too can make wonderful animations like the one you see on the screen. Now, using the power of stable diffusion and comfy UI, you'll easily be able to create trending masterpieces to woo your friends and thus become irresistible. For this, you're going to need Comfy UI up and running already, so if you've not done that as yet and you need help with it, then do be sure to watch my beginner's guide video. In it, you'll find loads of really useful entry-level information, and that should be your first stop before diving into this video if you've never used Comfy UI before. That way, you'll have a great starting point with knowledge about simple Comfy UI workflows, where models go, and a variety of other basic hints and tips. You will need a somewhat recent graphics card. I'm afraid if you've got something like an NVIDIA 1060 from 2016, then AI animation may be a bit beyond the power of your card. Right, let's get on to the setup. Now, links for all of these things can be found down in the video description, but your primary site, the place you really want to go, where everything is all gathered in one place, is the Very Comfy Nerd website. Here you can see a table at the top has various resources, and also just down below, you've got all the workflows. If you start by dragging and dropping a workflow image from the Very Comfy Nerd website into your Comfy UI interface, then you'll either be good to go already, or you will see some red nodes. A red node means a custom node will need to be installed. As you've watched all of my previous videos, you will of course have Comfy UI Manager installed already. And if that's the case, you can just click on Manager and then click Install Missing Custom Nodes. You'll also want to update all, then close that and stop and restart Comfy UI. It may take a moment to complete, but once it's done, you'll have all the new nodes ready to go. Just in case you forgot to watch my other Comfy UI videos in which I go into how cool the manager is, the link for it is also on the Very Comfy Nerd webpage. Okay, so now you've got the prompt travel with IP adapter workflow loaded. You've installed any missing custom nodes. You've updated everything and you've restarted, meaning if you now go down to the little menu and press the refresh button, there it is, refresh, then that will update all of the options in the available loaders to match the models on your own computer. For example, if we have a look at these checkpoints, there you can see a list and the list on your own computer will likely be very different to the one on mine. Being an avid watcher of the Nerdy Rodent YouTube channel, you will of course already know the default locations for these various models is Comfy UI Stroke Models, and that there are loads of subdirectories in there with the names to match each of the model types. For example, here, you can see one called checkpoints, and that's where the checkpoints go. There's also one for clip vision, control net, VAE, and so 
on some custom nodes, however, have their own models directory. If we have a look at the custom nodes and take a look at the IP adapter one, you can see there it also has its own custom models directory. Now this may seem confusing at first, but don't worry as I will specify exactly when it isn't the standard default location that everything usually goes in normally. Right, let's go through all the models that you're going to need for this as the chances are you may be missing a couple. Okay, so there's quite a few models for this one. Each of them should be specified in these purple loaders here in the loaders section. Then the first one you'll need is a stable diffusion 1.5 checkpoint along with a VAE. If your model has a VAE baked in, then don't worry, I've got a little router node up the top there. So you could just connect that into the root and that will use the built in VAE. Or of course, like it is by default, you can have a separate one there. Next is the Animate Diff and Animate Diff LoRa loader. Now, this is one of those custom nodes which does have its own models directory. You'll need at least one Animate Diff motion model as well as this model checkpoint here. Now, if you're going to be using the motion LoRa's, you do need a version two checkpoint. If we have a look at the web page for this extension, it gives us all of that information here. So download motion modules, you will need at least one. So this one with underscore V2, you can use with the motion LoRa's as well as these fine tunes as well, the 0.5 and the 0.75 PTH. As it states there as well, place the models in custom nodes, comfy UI, animate diff evolved, models. So if I show you over in my directory, we've got our custom nodes, comfy UI, animate diff evolved. And then we've got a models directory there, which has all of those various models in. Now, just to give you an example of how to download one of these files into the directories that they specify. So here I'm going to download a motion LoRa from the Hugging Face site. So let's open that link in a new tab that will take me over to hugging face now it looks like there's nothing there but if we click on files and versions you'll see all of the different files there and uh, let's pick one we'll have this laura tilt up if you click on download file then you'll get another window appear and you want to download that into your custom nodes comfy ui animate diff evolved motion laura directory so you just click save there and that will download the file straight into the correct place. The clip vision and IP adapter models are next. Now this is a mixed location one with the image encoder going in the default clip vision directory, but this IP adapter plus the SD15 one there, that has its own directory in the IP adapter custom node so let's go and have a look at that so we'll close that one down that's the old one and we want the ip adapter models directory there it is and there we have the matching file ip adapter plus sd15 so you can see there the names match up exactly if you rename the files that will rename it in there as well you may once again have to click refresh and pick the model that you need and the final thing to load down here, which is kind of optional, is an upscaling model. Once again, links from the Very Comfy Nerd website will take you over to this list of millions of upscalers. All right, there's a few hundred in there, but do download from the categories available the type of upscaler that best suits your own requirements. Okay, with the setup complete, you're ready to start making animations. Most of the previous things you'll hardly ever change once you have set them, perhaps with the exception of those motion LoRa's, as you may want to change the directions. You can chain them as well. So if you just go over here, if you want a different motion LoRa, as well as the one you've got there, you can just drag over there, ADE, Animate Diff, Load LoRa, and there you go, you're using Pan Down and 
zoom in, but I'll just delete that one for now. So you can have multiple motion LORAs there as well, which is very handy. When making a new animation, the things you want to pay close attention to each time are the weights section down here, the load images directory. Those are the images for your IP adapter. You've also got the resolution and frames and of course the prompting section above. If we start with having a look at the weights section, this section controls the balance between your IP adapter and your prompts. For more information on IP adapter, just take a look at my previous video about the instant LORAs, but essentially IP adapter controls the generation without the use of having to have prompts. Let's have a look at what's going on here. If you have a strong IP adapter combined with low prompt weights, then you'll get a video like this where your prompts barely impact the video at all. At around 0.5 strength on each, you'll get a rather interesting blend. My personal favorite is to blend them as you get really weird stuff going on. And finally, with the IP adapter strength down at zero, you'll only get what you prompt, which is basically having the weirdness setting on maximum. Talking about prompting, you'll see this isn't quite like your usual prompt text as it's using a batch prompt schedule. Each of the prompts given there come into effect based on the frame number given just before it. So there you can see zero, I've got a rodent eating pasta, 24, it goes to seeds, then beans, ice cream, and finally ending up with some cheese. There are a couple of extra boxes here. You can prepend and append text as well, if you like. And underneath, you've got the negative prompt box. Now, do remember to follow this prompt format exactly. So you've got a comma at the end of each of those, but not on the last one. If you do get it wrong, so let's put a comma in there and try and cue this prompt up, then it will tell you that you've done it wrong. Error occurred when executing batch prompt. So there it is, executing property, naming close in double quotes. Yet, yeah, no, you've, you've put a comma on the last line. So remember to follow that format exactly to avoid such an error. Okay, it may seem like you're taking in a lot at first, but we have nearly finished. The final section down here is the upscaling group. Now, if you don't want to do upscaling at all, you can just right click on that group and set group nodes to never that will gray them out and then you don't load the upscaler and you don't do the upscaling, perhaps handy for slightly lower VRAM cards, but it does give you a larger resolution video at the end of it. And there you have it, videos of any length with consistent characters, objects, styles and such via the IP adapter, which can also morph and change along the way as you like, all for free, from the very nerdy rodent webpage. I hope you enjoyed the video and to see you on the next one.